Welcome back. We're going to continue our unit on rationals by looking at how to divide rational expressions. But before we get to expressions with variables, let's just look at fractions that have just numbers. If I have one-fourth divided by two-thirds, the way I would go about dividing this is I could rewrite it as one-fourth divided by two-thirds, as one big fraction. Now, I don't like big fractions where fractions are inside fractions, so what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of the denominator. How can I get rid of the denominator? Well, I can multiply the denominator by 3 and divide by 2, or multiply it by the reciprocal. So 2 thirds, the reciprocal, or the flip of that, is 3 halves. Why would I do that? Well, when I do that, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and so now I'm just left with a 1 on the bottom, and I'm getting rid of this big fraction. However, if I'm multiplying by 3 halves in the denominator, that's changing the problem if I don't also do it in the numerator. So I have to multiply the numerator by 3 halves. What allows me to do this is I'm not changing the problem because what is 3 halves divided by 3 halves? Just 1. It's like I'm multiplying my original problem of 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds by a big fancy looking 1. So now look at what I have in the numerator. Now that I got rid of the denominator, in the numerator I have 1 fourth times 3 halves. And now it's just a multiplication problem, which we went over in the last video. We multiply by going across. 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 2 is 8. And so 1 fourth divided by 2 thirds is simply 3 eighths. But we don't even have to make it that complicated. Notice the differences between my problem on the bottom and the original problem. My first fraction stayed the same, so I have one-fourth. Instead of division, I now have multiplying. So what I can do is I can change the division to multiplication, which we already went over in the last video, so now we're getting to something that's familiar. And then if you look at the last fraction, I have two-thirds in my original, I have three-halves in my new problem, I'm basically multiplying by the reciprocal or I'm flipping the last fraction. So I flip the second fraction and then I just change it to multiplying to get one-fourth times three-halves, which it gives me the same problem of three-eighths. So what I'm basically saying is you don't have to go through this whole process of writing it as one big fraction and getting multiplying the top and the bottom by the reciprocal. You simply, to divide fractions, can change it to multiply and then flip the second fraction in order to make it a much simpler problem. Namely, we can multiply rational expressions like we did in the last video. So really, dividing rational expressions is very much like multiplying rational expressions except for these two new steps. You're going to flip the second expression, change it to multiplying, and then we'll talk about this in just a second. We have to state some newish restrictions. So let's look at a couple examples. So very first thing is factor. So I factor everything. So I have 2 times x. x squared is x times x. Divided by 2 times x squared is 2 times x times x. And then 3x cubed is 3 times x times x times x. So I factored everything. Step two, just like we did with multiplying, we're going to state the restrictions. What values of x in the denominator are going to give me zero? Well, I have x, so that's x equals zero. Here I have x. Well, I already have that up in my restrictions. I have a three. Well, three equals zero is an untrue statement, and it doesn't even have a variable, so I don't need that. And then I have another x, another x, another x. So my only restriction in this case is 0. So now we did both of those when we did multiplying rational expressions. So here's the new part. I'm going to flip the second expression and change it to multiplying. So my first expression stays the same. I have 2 times x, x times x. I'm going to change the division to multiplying. And I'm going to flip this upside down. So I have 3 times x times x times x all over 2 times x times x. Now I have to state new restrictions. And why? Well, I have to look at this denominator and make sure there's no new restrictions because this is a new denominator. So I have 2. Well, 2 equals 0, again, doesn't make sense. 
And then I have an x, I already have that, and I have another x, and I already have that. So I don't actually have any new restrictions in this case, but we always have to make sure, we always have to check. And now we continue this just like it was a multiplying problem. I simplify and multiply across. So I can go ahead and just make this one big numerator and one big denominator. And now I can start canceling things or simplifying those things which divided together give me one. So I have a two in the top and the bottom, that's one. I have an X in the top and X in the bottom. I don't have a three in the denominator. I have an X in the top and another X in the bottom, another X in the top and another X, another X in the numerator, another X in the denominator. And so what am I left with? I'm left with just the number three in this case. And then we write this just like we did when we multiplied rational expressions. So my final answer is three, but X cannot equal zero. Let's look at another one. So here again, I have two fractions or rational expressions that are being divided. First step is factor everything. So I have B squared minus two B minus 15. So this is a trinomial, I'm gonna use product and sum. And when you do that, you're going to get B minus five and B plus three. Divided by, I have four B plus 10. I have a GCF of two. And when I take that out, I'm left with two B plus five and I can't factor that any further. Divided by B squared plus three B, I have a GCF of B. So that's gonna be B plus three. And then 2b plus 5, I can't factor at all. So step one, factor. Just like when we multiplied, we're going to find the restrictions. So I have a 2, and again, 2 equals 0. Doesn't even make sense, so I don't need it. I have a 2b plus 5. So 2b plus 5 is equal to 0. Subtract 5, so I have 2b equals negative 5. Divide by 2, so I get b is equal to negative 5 halves. And then I have a 2b plus 5 again, and so I don't need to include that one. So, so far my restrictions are negative 5 halves. So now here's the two new steps. I'm going to go ahead and keep the first expression the same. So I have b minus 5, b plus 3, all over 2 times 2b plus 5 but I'm gonna change it to multiply, and I'm going to flip the second expression. So now this is two B plus five divided by B times B plus three. So now that I flipped it and I change it to multiply, I go ahead and find any new restrictions because I have a new denominator. And in this case, we have a couple new restrictions. I have B equals zero, and there's nothing to solve, but I have zero. And then I have b plus 3 equals 0. And when I subtract 3 on both sides, I get b equals negative 3. And I have restrictions of negative 5 halves, 0, and negative 3. I can go ahead and multiply across and simplify. So I'm going to make this one big numerator and denominator. And in the numerator, I have a b minus 5, but I don't have one in the denominator. I have a b plus 3 in top and the bottom, so that's 1. I have a 2b plus 5 and a 2b plus 5, and so that's 1. And so now what I'm left with is a b minus 5 in the numerator and a 2 times b in the denominator. So again, I would write this as b minus 5 over 2b. However, b cannot be equal to negative 5 halves, 0, and negative 3. Let's look at one last one. So again, the very first step is factor everything. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 doesn't have a GCF. It's a trinomial, so you're going to do product and sum. And when you do that, you're going to get x plus 3 times x plus 3. x minus 3 can't be factored. x squared minus 9 is the difference of perfect squares, so that's going to be x minus 3 and x plus 3. And then x squared minus 6x plus 9 doesn't have a GCF, but it is a trinomial, so you're going to do the product and sum. And when you do that, you're going to get x minus 3 times x minus 3. Once you do the factors, you're going to state the restrictions. So from here, I have x minus 3 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 3. 
And then I already have X minus three up in the restrictions, so I don't need to do anything with those. Now that I stated the restrictions, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the second fraction and change it to multiplying. So again, the first fraction, the first rational expression doesn't change. And then I change the division to multiplying and I flip the second expression. Once I flip the second expression, I go ahead and find any new restrictions because again, I have a new denominator. So right here I have x minus three, but I already did that in the restrictions, but I have x plus three now. And so x plus three equals zero, subtract three from both sides, and I get a restriction of negative three. So my restrictions for this problem are negative three and three. Now this is just simply a multiplying problem like the last video. I can simplify and multiply across. So I'm gonna combine the numerators and combine the denominators going straight across. And then I can cancel or simplify anything that's gonna become one. So x plus three divided by x plus three is one. I don't have another x plus three in the denominator. I have an x minus three and an x minus three. And I have another x minus three and x minus three. So my final answer is simply x plus three. How would I write that with the restrictions? Well, again, it's going to be x plus three. However, x cannot be negative three or three. And so that's all there really is to dividing rational expressions. It's very much like multiplying, except you have to remember to change the division to multiplication, flip that second expression, and then check for any new restrictions.